Okay, should we start? Or we are some of the students are still expected. Anyway, <clears throat> what we'll do is Right. We will still talk about the physics of the atmosphere and still talk in qualitative sense as to what could happen to the dispersion of the pollutants in the vertical plane or in the vertical direction. Okay. So, if you last time you recall we did say that depending on the stability of the atmosphere, the dispersion may be very good, dispersion may be neutral or dispersion can be very poor or there may not be any dispersion at all. Okay. And those situations you know like we encounter on a cycle of 24 hours and we also said the night time the dispersion is very poor. Okay. And we also said that how depending on the depending on as the earth gets heated up the inversion is broken okay. and the thing changes from stable to unstable in the daytime and get back to the stable conditions. Okay. With that context I want to define another term called very important in air pollution dispersion is the mixing height. The physical meaning or the, or the meaning mixing height is, it is a vertical distance up to which the pollutants will be completely be mixed. Okay. It is a like basically mixing layer or sometimes it is also called as a boundary layer. Okay. And <coughs> we draw our favorite figure as to this is Z here, this is T. Okay. And let us say we are talking about a situation. 7 o'clock in the morning. Okay. 7 a.m. Oh, let us write it 7 a.m. And suppose my source of pollutant is somewhere here. A chimney or you may even call some kind of ground level source like cars. Now, with this knowledge, with this picture, okay, what can you say how high the pollutants will go? Will it go up to here? Will it go up to here? Or it will go up to here or it will be here? Up to what height they can disperse? Up to what height the turbulence is there? We are morning 7 o'clock. This is the inversion that has broken. Yesterday we draw this picture and you see up to what height you think the pollutants that is coming out from the chimney, okay, up to what height they can mix. First point here, excellent. See here, there is no chance, there is kind of a lid if you really like it. There is a lid because we know even if the pollutant go here, there will be no dispersion. Okay, means pollutant will not even go there because no dispersion can take place beyond this point. If I draw the same picture, okay, what I will do is for the convenience, I just draw the picture a little, call it let us say 11 am, but then I will redraw this picture with some temperature going like this, because inversion is broken. Okay. So, so now let us say this is 11 am. Obviously, now you will say the pollutants can disperse up to this height. So, you see that mixing height keep on change. Okay. Depending on the hour of the day, the mixing height will change. And you also see that when you want to model the things, when you want to find out the ground level concentration, you have to see to what extent they will go. Okay. Okay. And then therefore, in the night time, the concentrations could be higher in the daytime there is a larger volume for the mixing. Okay. So, daytime concentration are likely to be low. Okay. 
okay. So, if based on this 7 o'clock, 11 o'clock, I if I generalize the mixing height of the different hours of the day, okay. <coughs> so, again we are calling here z and here this time for a change not the temperature, but time of the day. So, then you say well early in the morning 4 o'clock there may be very low mixing height okay. as you go by it by the time you are 2 o'clock here the mixing height is there some kind of pattern you get okay. the mixing height keep on increasing as we have seen from 7 a 7 a m to 11 a m to 2 p m and things like that and this information is very important okay. because when you want to find out the concentration you will say in the <coughs> morning the concentration will be in this layer as you go up the layer will be like this in this layer in this layer and by the time it is 2 o'clock in the afternoon the mixing height is very high and everything vertically mixes up okay. and then again things starts getting compressed okay. and then you again see the mixing height is low. Okay. Let me ask you a question. Suppose this mixing height is low here. Okay. If I have a tall chimney which is at this height, okay, what will happen to the pollutants? Will they come down to the ground or they will continue to go up? What happens? Down to the ground. The one answer is go up. Do you want to change your, change your mind? See, <coughs> suppose my chimney is is here. It means I am going beyond my mixing height. Okay. It means my chimney is here now. What will happen to the plume? Will it come down? It will not come down because there is a kind of layer. It will just it will not disperse, but it cannot come down here. See here, because this will be go beyond this thing. Okay. Although they, it will be simply be traveling within these two layers at the most, but this do not come down. So, the idea of the large or tall chimneys is that well under the difficult time when you have the volume of the air or the height of the air is very small for the dispersion at least put a chimney which is taller than this particular region. So, then pollutants are people are not affected at the ground level. Okay. The people and by the time the chimney is like this chimney in the daytime there is enough mixing height and the pollutants get mixed. So, you see therefore, the chimney height is provided 275 meters because normally the lowest mixing height that we get is of the order of 150, 175, 200 and things like that. So, you see well even <coughs> let us make a chimney which will cross this thing and you know the people the ground level pollution is not so severe. Okay. But then you, you, you remember that all the ground level sources like the the cars and domestic cooking and they are called they all will be causing the serious problem. Okay. Having said that, so you have got the some idea of the mixing height. Okay. So, you get this kind of typical picture, but I will I will tell you with little uh, experience which we had here is that when you do in the winter time so and this height is can typically go up to let us say 3000 meters. Okay. And that is what typically even if the rainy conditions or cloudy condition you see the cloud at a particular height and flat kind of thing. Okay. And then you go beyond those clouds the sky is again clean. Okay. So, that is up to what is the mixing height. Okay. So, what we can tell you what you expect in the winter time mixing height will be more or in the summer height summer time mixing height will be more summer time mixing height will be more. Okay. So, you get a sharp kind of thing in the, the summer it is like this and in the winter it might just be like this. So, this may be typical summer this can be typical winter. Okay. Then let me also ask you 
will this kind of pattern what you see, will it be similar in North India vis a vis in South India? It will not be right. In North India you will get the sharp you know because the temperature daytime temperature and nighttime temperature there is a lot of difference and in the South India the daytime and nighttime temperature are very same. Okay. So, this you typically get in North India this kind of pattern. or in the coastal area or, or this thing, let me draw with another picture, another color if I can is this is typical you get in the south India. Okay. So, typically this you get and there is not much of variation between winter and summer in south India because there is hardly any winter or summer differences there. So, you see how important is the mixing height to specific location, what location you are talking about. Based on this knowledge, I want to also define a situation where for a large for a, for a chimney, which situation will be the worst situation. Suppose this my chimney height is fixed, chimney height is fixed anywhere okay. and you have a situation Any, any problem with the chimney? Not much of problem because things will continue to go up. Okay. This is after some times the picture will be let us say after some time picture will be like this. So, mixing height is here. After some time the mixing height will, will rise as you have seen with time it rises. So, after some time the mixing height will be like this. Okay. There will be a time okay, when your mixing height will be exactly equal to chimney height. Okay. What happens under the situation? See earlier you did not face any problem because it was going outside your lid okay, as if it was penetrating this, this uh, ceiling and going out. But then now there is a ceiling and everything is within the ceiling then things will mix within this, this particular zone because this is a mixing height. So, this one. So, what happens under this situation all the pollutants that that immediately disperses in this region. So, as soon as the mixing height is just just at the top of the chimney okay, you see the pollutants just dispersing okay, and that typically happens in the morning around 9 o'clock or so. Okay. It happens for a short while because after little while the mixing height is going to go up and then you have a larger height to for the dispersion. This situation okay, which I will I can redraw the whole clean picture now for you. Okay. So, this pollutants simply disperses within this zone because they cannot go up okay. they have they are within trapped in this one and this is what is the situation. So, all the pollutants little distance away from the source and this situation we call as fumigation. Okay. This happens for a short time it happens, but it happens. Okay. and the pollution level will suddenly go up very close to the source. Okay. We are still staying with qualitative sense plume behavior. Okay. Yes. 
conditions are calm above this, conditions are unstable below this. You can see here, you know, we have defined the rate of, and this may be something like this may be your dry adiabatic lapse rate. So, what you see, so normally what we are saying, if turbulence is there, it is very good situation, but look just look at this typically at this particular point of time, okay, up is stable, so it cannot disperse up. So, it is it is bound to disperse underneath, once it is bound to disperse underneath, then this is the area where it can disperse, so you get the fumigation. So, this is because of the turbulence in fact, the dispersion pollution level is high at the ground level, because we are all the time thinking about the ground level, because people live on the ground level. Okay. So, <coughs> In fact, this, uh, the, this there is no problem here. If I can put something beyond this, there was no problem. But because this thing is unstable, and you see that there is a turbulence, and this thing, uh, nothing will happen. Anything anyway, it won't even go up. Okay. So uh, let's quickly, uh, we'll, we'll do it very quickly now. Suppose the situation is like this. Okay, and chimney height is somewhere here. Draw a better picture. Conditions are unstable, so there will be a lot of diffusion. Okay, unstable conditions, right? Okay, this is what we call as looping. A situation can be like this that we have just now talked about. Okay. And my chimney is here, chimney is beyond this actually. What do you expect? It will not go up very nice, so this is what it will be and it will not come down rather. Okay, or, or, or let us put it this way, it goes like this and this is what we call as lofting and, and if you will notice, if you spend some time watching chimney sometimes, you can see the situation lofting okay. and this situation we have talked about fumigation that is situation number third. So, you can under the same heading plume behavior, you can also see the fumigation which we talked separately. Okay, Let us talk the another situation, where my chimney is what do you expect? My plume will be cannot go this side, cannot go this side, it will just be, it will be trapped between this as you have seen this one. So, this is what we call as trapping. Okay. What else? One more situation. Even if I am not writing, you all know that I am referring to Z and T, Z and T. Okay, we have a situation which is this your adiabatic lapse rate and situation is like this. And my chimney is here. What will happen? Thin layer. Okay. because everywhere there is a no chance of dispersion. Okay. This is what we call fanning, okay. the situation called fanning. Okay. And the last is
what do you expect here? Stable. stable was this, you know stable condition, these conditions are neutral. The neutral means in a conical way it slowly on its own because of the because of the concentration gradient it will keep on slowly growing up. So, it will just go like this. and it forms like a cone. So, we call this as cone. Okay. That is what we call this as coning because it forms like a cone. So, we call that as a cone. Yeah. Huh. See the thing is, <coughs> it should go up, but that once a temperature, once that what you are saying that we call as a thermal buoyancy. So, that thermal buoyancy that I have not shown here, that initially some rises there and after that the temperature is more or less the same. So, that is what I should have really drawn it like little bit of thermal buoyancy and then dispersion. Okay. So, that initial buoyancy is always there okay, because of the temperature difference. But after that you see the temperature more or less stabilizes with the atmospheric temperature. So, this one now you can also see now you can almost with your knowledge you can say under what time of the day or at what time of day what situation will be there. Okay. In fact, this is one of the assignments earlier we used to give that well all right just go and wash the chimney and write down what is happening and what is the time of the day and things like that. Okay. Let me also ask you with the knowledge what we have. This condition normally we have said is normally in the later in the evening or early in the morning around 7 or 7 a m and 7 p m or 9 a m or, or 7 p m. Suppose the conditions are very heavily overcast, okay. the conditions are heavily overcast, you have very thick layer of cloud. What kind of conditions you expect? Means the heat is neither going in nor going out, so under very heavily cast conditions you would expect conditions to be. So, sometimes the problem is just, just defined under heavily, uh, heavily overcast conditions what will be the dispersion like. Okay. So, that is little uh, thing you should understand with your knowledge of the atmospheric physics or the temperature or temperature gradient and all the focus that we have made in here is based on the vertical temperature gradient and vertical movement of the pollutants. And in the process what we have done is we have all the time in some sense talking about stability. Is not it? Okay. And we are broadly using the term stable, unstable and neutral. Okay. And then they all what essentially stability is indicating is the turbulence of the atmosphere. Is not it? That is the turbulence of the atmosphere. So, in order for us to even more uh, get the more finer details of this thing. This stability is further classified. Okay. From the broad term you want to come at the micro level. So, this there were two people they say that well the stability must be have more finer fractions rather than stable and stable neutral. Okay. So, they define the stability in six classes and they are still called these they, they gave the name A, B, C, D, E and F. Okay. That is the nomenclature they gave and This they call as ah. they call it highly unstable or very unstable. Let us check that. Well, I have the terminology extremely unstable, okay. We will write extremely unstable.
moderately unstable. Unstable or slightly unstable? Slightly unstable. This is neutral, stable or what? Slightly stable and stable. And stable. And then they defined the things. on the on the way del t by del z okay i'll take the help of a document which we prepared some times back for central pollution control board to because you don't have to remember the numbers but i'll write for your this thing that is how the classification they gave okay that this is how based on the temperature gradient we let's just simply not call them under these conditions stable unstable and neutral but let's specify them depending on <coughs> the temperature gradient the atmosphere is having and obviously minus 1 degrees per we have made some mistake can you figure it out what is the mistake What is the condition which we came up for the neutral? One de reduction in temperature, one degree Celsius per hundred meters, and you see, I have forgotten there per hundred meters, right? So we must specify that one per hundred meters. I don't know if <coughs> so. I must specify the units here. That's very important. Otherwise, I am not correct. See, so we should specify the units. Okay. Because see, <coughs> why we are introducing this thing? We'll eventually going to use what Pascal Gifford did. They did it sometime in 1928 or I don't know when. And we still use the thing, the Pascal uh, and Gifford stability classes to do all our calculations that will follow in coming lectures and things like that. Okay. Now the problem was this was fine, but you see it is still not easy to do the measurement of the temperature at various heights. Okay, and do it consistently because it costs a lot of money, a lot of instrumentation, and things like that. So there was a person called Slade. Nineteen sixty-five. He said, "Well." <coughs> you do not really have to measure the temperature okay? and we will talk about somebody else also in a moment. He said you do not really have to measure the temperature, you are measuring the wind speed and wind direction and you see the fluctuations in the wind direction are the indicator of turbulence and they come up with this thing that well let us if you can do the measurement of the wind speed wind direction which we normally do which is very easy to do based on the fluctuations in the wind direction you see the wind if there is no turbulence the wind will be like this the wind wind when there are lots of turbulence it just moves you know the direction so if you uh, let's draw it here if you look at the chart that we have discussed one sometimes back 
about the wind direction 0 to 360 degrees and this is the side of your time and you see here this is in a way showing you the stable conditions and at the same time after some time This obviously is a unstable condition. So, he, he said that well and he correlated, he is concurrently did this measurement along with the measurement of the temperature and then with lots of statistics and things like that as we do. He said well you have to really measure the hourly sigma theta. What is sigma theta? The standard deviation of the wind direction we all know how to find out the standard deviation of the data, is not it? Okay. Simple normal standard deviation you find out what is theta, theta is your wind direction. Okay. You find out the, the sigma theta because you do the measurements. Okay. Suppose this was one hour, you can every minute your computer is there that will record what was the wind direction. Okay. With that wind direction, you can also find out what is this standard deviation of the wind direction. Okay. So, he said if you have the sigma theta, okay, then you can correlate that to the Pascal and Gifford stability. So, we will I will also give you the number with respect to sigma theta and again you do not have to remember the number nor I remember these numbers, but let us write them for your information and the units will be degrees. So, let us extend this. More than 22.5 to 17.4 17.4 to 12.5 okay. and then 12.4 are we at D? Yes, 12.4 to 7.5 and then 7.4 to 3.5 and just less than okay. That is what the slate had to do. This was published in 1965 and uh, somebody found out that even the easier way, because again you do not want to nowadays everything computer is there 65 now computer was there. So, they say in the hour whichever the hour you are you are looking at, okay, you take the, the width of the direction okay, within this hour. So, what is the width of the direction? is this much in this hour wind has wind has changed from here to here okay so they say sigma theta can be approximated as width of the wind direction divided by 6 this is a very very approximate thing to do with the to find out the sigma theta okay uh, now we don't have the uh, the wind measurement device here right in the lab but we have it somewhere there so you can look at the chart and they say all oh, right the, the WD has been about 36 approximately. Okay. So, the sigma theta is 6 and sigma theta is 6 then maybe I am talking about the stable conditions okay. and these things are very important and always remember we are trying to develop a relationship between source and the impact and to do the develop the relationship we need to know the meteorology because meteorology is a transport mechanism it is the one which is transporting the pollutant. So, still we have not come as to how this is what is happening, but we are just studying the atmosphere. So, this is how the stability Pascal and Gifford if you want to put the word here stability. Okay. Turner 1968 
okay. 68, yeah, 68. He said, well, all right, you have the two methods, okay, but sometimes even this information may not be there, and still you want to know about the meteorology. Then he came up with a method, which that's what we'll discuss, and let's see how far we go. He discussed the method, and he said, well, all right, you just go to an airport, nearest airport. And whatever the measurements done by the airport as a matter of routine measurements, that is what the information generally that will be available. Suppose you have to do a remote area, you say, okay, but the power plant should come or not, but then <coughs> you do not have the ways and means to measure this one, or nor you can do the long term measurement because you have to take a decision, nor you can run through your wind direction, this thing. Then he says, go to the nearest airport, okay, and get some data, okay, and that data will help you to find out the stability. In fact, before we had our wind speed, wind direction system here, the students used to go to Chakeri Air Force Station and always used to bring the data and do, do some analysis and things like that to get to the stability class. Okay. So again, there is a table which is for the stability class by um, the Turner, which I will have to, since you know, like I do not have the slide here to put, I will have to draw that, just bear with that, uh, the drawing thing. So, he said, if somehow we can measure the insulation, okay. what is insulation? This is the amount of the heat that is reaching the ground, okay. it is not that which is going away from the ground. He said, if we can somehow measure or somehow estimate rather the amount of the heat that is coming down that we call as the insulation. Okay. So, that based on the insulation, the classification can be done. So, insulation somehow is not directly measured at the, at the um, at the uh, station Air Force, Air Force or, or even your normal civilian um, airport, but they may do something else. But let me make this table for you and that table given by the Turner and then we will see it that how this is. He said the first of all surface wind that everyone measures at the airport, they measure the surface wind as a matter of regular thing. Okay. So, he gave and the units are here meters per second. When we say surface wind, normally we are referring to the wind measurement at the height of 10 meters. Okay, that is a standard thing. Even if no one tells you the surface, surface measurement, it is implied, it is understood that the measurement is 10 meters. Okay, let me make slightly this a little better. Okay, let me say daytime insulation and insulation he defined just simply define a strong moderate slight. thin overcast, that is what is I mean to say, C C C. 
Okay. Let us quickly write the numbers here. We will come to, come to this thing how the insulation is to be calculated, estimated, measured. Okay. Just complete that table because we want to spend just about one minute onto this table now. This is not, do not misunderstand, this is not 7, okay. this is more than 6. Okay. I want to explain the terminology CC, okay. there is a new variable there you see here. C C stands for in this case cloud cover. Okay. What I mean by cloud cover? Okay. See here, <coughs> what do you see? If you look at the sky, okay, and you divide the sky in equal eight parts, okay, just it is a synoptic measurement. You don't even need an instrument. Okay, the person physically he goes up, of course nowadays you have the instrument, but the person physically goes up at a particular time of the day, look at the sky and you say out of 8 divisions that he can make, equal divisions, how many divisions are filled with the cloud, simple. Okay. How many, how many parts or how many, suppose this is the sky which you see which will look like something circular to you, divide this in equal 8 parts are the 8 parts or more, I do not know, 8 parts. Okay. And then you say okay, out of this 8 parts, this was filled and this was filled. The cloud cover is 2 by 8, simple. Okay. And if say uh, this was filled and this portion was filled, uh, the cloud cover was, well, cloud cover was 3 by 8. Okay. And the airport people, they regularly every hour, they record this. Okay. So, what you, you really know, this wind speed is measured by the airport people anyway. This is also measured by the airport people, okay. that day they do this thing. So, that once you know this, I have not still told you as to how, what is strong, moderate and slight, but if you know these things, you can define this. But the other thing what I need to point out to you is that and that is somehow, why is that when wind speed is like more than 6 or 5 to 6 or 6, why it is D all the time? What is the guess? It's more than 6 is not calm conditions, but the wind is very high. You can say it is very high wind, 6 meters per second is reasonably high wind. It could be any time of the day, but still you see uh, even if the insulation is strong or moderate, D. Bright sunshine, high wind speed, you are not getting to A you are getting to uh, D. Well, the answer is, and for Before this question, the quadrant is removed from the, removed from the, from the Huh? Because of the high wind speed, the, all the pollutant will be removed from the atmosphere. No, we are not talking about the pollutant. We are talking about the atmosphere. Forget about the pollutants. Even if there is no chimney, we are sitting at the, let us say, North Pole, for example. Okay. But then even then if the wind is 6, you will say the stability, you will see the temperature at that time, there will be something like this, temperature gradient. See what happens at that particular wind speed, which is high, you have the gradient, whatever the gradient that is established because of the influence of the ground that is broken. Okay. That, that, that kind of unstable or that kind of variability in the uh, gradient, in spite of very high strong uh, daytime insulation, because the wind is so high 
that gradient of the temperature is broken. Okay. Once that is broken then you come back to what neutral conditions which is standard thing. So, you see here when the wind speed is and by the way I I can share with you I, I myself used to wonder when I used to look at the book because no book write about this one they simply give this thing and this thing. But then I, I spoke to someone when I was student like you and then, then came the explanation but unfortunately it is not given in the book because at such high temperature you cannot sustain the kind of temperature gradient which is for A B. But then this is what C or D will be all the time prevalent. So, you uh, one thing you can check quickly okay, somebody says okay, this is a stability because we will use stability so much in coming lectures is well or oh, wind speed is more than 6 just use the D. Okay. For example, I can ask you a question the temperature was so um, the wind speed was 6 meters or 7 meters per second strong bright sunshine this that do this calculation. So, obviously, you should assume stability as C or D okay. that is what the idea is. It is it, it is seen you can still examine that you can still examine the cloud uh, uh, how much is the cloud and things like that. So, it is done synoptic measurement every 4 hours okay, and then they are able to either with the machines or now they have the equipment okay, with the equipment they can just you just can scan and can give the number. But otherwise in the daytime and the other time people were doing synoptically and you know people uh, were experienced people for that one. His job was only this. He was trained onto that one, okay, so that he will he will do this kind of thing. In daytime, uh, are we considering the cloud to cover or are we not considering the cloud to cover? We are considering. Slight. It means it is things are cloudy. That's why the solar radiation which is coming is slight. Otherwise, in the daytime, you don't expect this to be slight. Okay, so in a way, the cloud cover is covered here. Okay, that is what it is. Well, we will. I will just make another one more little comment, and then we'll stop because well, we'll just make a small table, and then what is insulation measured in? what per meter square or the another unit that is there is Langley per hour. Meteorologists they measure it in terms of the Langley per hour. <laughs> so, I will again give you a little table okay, insulation category. Again, you don't have to remember it. You do not require this, but you will still write it. See, always remember the insulation, even the night time, is never 0, uh, some solar radiation is coming in. So, this is I will write here uh, Langley we will define what is Langley R equals that is R is the solar radiation here more than 50 when R is more than f more than 25, but less than 50 and when R is more than 12.5, but less than 25 and in the night time R is 0.5 and uh, 1 Langley equals to 1 calorie per square centimeter. So, that is how we define the Langley ok. 
Okay. So now <coughs> you know the numbers, and now our next job in the next class will be how to calculate or estimate the R. From R, you define your solar radiation, and then you are, and with this thing you combine. The Turner thing is very frequently used, okay? Because it's so easy to get the not only the present data, but you can also get the historical data from the airports. Okay, you can find out okay what happened in night. In fact, the Bhopal thing. Okay, when we uh, we wanted to find out what is the uh, uh, wind speed, what was the direction, there was no measurement. We went to the Bhopal airport asking for the all the data that we needed. Airport very important place for meteorologists and for the air pollution engineers.